Hello friends, this video on Mineral Nutrition Part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us start our discussion with nitrogen fixation. Now this is going to be very very important. So what is nitrogen fixation? What comes to your mind from the name nitrogen fixation? That means the process where nitrogen gets fixed, gets fixed as what? Let us see. It is the process of conversion of nitrogen into usable ammonia. As I said, when I, when I talk about nitrogen, I am talking about the nitrogen gas which is present in the atmosphere. So I am talking about that atmospheric nitrogen which is non-reactive and not usable. So this atmospheric nitrogen, we convert it into usable ammonia. And this process is known as nitrogen fixation. Now, the question is, why do we want to convert it into a usable form? I mean, why do the living organisms, whether it is plant or animal, why do they need nitrogen? What will they do with nitrogen? Well, plants and animals need nitrogen to make so many different biomolecules. For example, proteins made up of amino acids. So, amino acids has nitrogen. The nucleic acids have nitrogen. So many other biomolecules for example, enzymes, hormones, they all are made up of nitrogen. So living organisms need nitrogen for synthesizing all these biomolecules present inside their body. Right? Now, there are many different ways of nitrogen fixation. Now, this conversion process can take place by, by three different ways, basically. The first is atmospheric fixation, industrial fixation, and biological fixation. So these are the three ways by which nitrogen can be converted into usable ammonia. However, atmospheric fixation and industrial fixation, these two processes are not that useful because the amount of nitrogen that gets converted is very less and also they have some impact, some negative impact on the atmosphere. So that means atmospheric and industrial fixation are not that beneficial but biological fixation is the most beneficial method of nitrogen fixation. So that is why often people call nitrogen fixation as biological nitrogen fixation. So we will spend more time in understanding the biological nitrogen fixation. But before that, let us quickly go through atmospheric and industrial fixation as well. So before we go ahead with the biological fixation, let us look at atmospheric and industrial fixation. So we'll start with atmospheric nitrogen fixation. So when we talk about fixing the atmospheric nitrogen, as I said before also, in the atmosphere nitrogen is present as dinitrogen gas. So this nitrogen molecule is basically two atoms of nitrogen which are joined together by a triple bond. Now the strength of a triple bond is quite huge. It is a quite strong bond. Now if you want to break this bond, you need to supply a really, really high amount of energy. So who is going to supply that energy? So you, be, you know, if you want to break this uh, triple bond, you need to have a source which will provide that amount of energy. So when I say atmospheric nitrogen fixation, this is a natural process. So we do not do anything or we do not try to supply that energy artificially. So it just happens in nature. And who in nature supplies that energy? It is provided by lightning and ultraviolet radiation. So these two things provide the energy which is required to convert the nitrogen. Basically, they provide the energy which is required to break the triple bond of nitrogen. And then it converts the nitrogen into oxides like nitrogen dioxide or NO or N2O, the various oxides, NO or NO2 or N2O. It converts it into those forms which in turn gets converted into the usable forms like ammonia or nitrates. So that is atmospheric nitrogen fixation. But in this process, only a very small amount of nitrogen is fixed. Like as I said, a huge amount of nitrogen is present in the atmosphere as dinitrogen gas. But with this process, because this process is not able to provide enough energy to convert a lot of nitrogen. So that means this process is not very useful. So there was another process called industrial nitrogen fixation. So this process was introduced by a scientist named Haber 
and that is why the process is often known as Heber-Bosch process after the name of the scientists. So this Heber-Bosch in the Heber-Bosch process nitrogen was fixed in the laboratory that is why the name is industrial nitrogen fixation. So what happens this process takes place under extremely high temperature and high pressure and under this high temperature and pressure nitrogen gets converted into ammonia. So the reaction which takes place under industrial nitrogen fixation is somewhat like this. This is the uh, nitrogen which is present in the atmosphere. This is combined with hydrogen to form ammonia. So this is the reaction and it is estimated that half of the protein in a human being consists of nitrogen which is originally fixed by this Heber process. So that means this process was quite useful when compared to the atmospheric nitrogen fixation process. However, there were some disadvantages of this process. What were they? This process caused a lot of contamination to the surface water as well as groundwater. It also caused a atmospheric pollution. So because of these disadvantages which were caused by this process to the atmosphere, this process was also not much encouraged for nitrogen fixation. So thereafter came the biological nitrogen fixation which was an extremely helpful process. So this is the process of conversion of nitrogen into usable ammonia by living organisms. So since it happens by living organisms, that is why the name biological nitrogen fixation. As I said, nitrogen being a stable compound with a triple bond, a large amount of energy will be required to break the triple bond. Right. So that is why it is not that any organism can carry out this nitrogen fixation. It has to be carried out only by those organisms which can afford to provide that much of energy. So a lot of energy was needed. Also, there is an enzyme called nitrogenase and this enzyme is capable of reducing nitrogen to ammonia. So what is the enzyme? The enzyme is nitrogenase. So now this enzyme is present only in prokaryotes. Now again, not all prokaryotes can perform nitrogen fixation because of the high energy requirement. So only those prokaryotes which have this enzyme nitrogenase and who can spend this much of energy can only do biological nitrogen fixation. So we will talk about the microorganisms. In fact, we'll talk about those prokaryotes which can do nitrogen fixation and then we will talk about how the process of nitrogen fix fixation actually take place. So now the question is, who are these nitrogen fixing living organisms? Now, one hint I have already given that they are nothing but prokaryotes. But again, not all prokaryotes will have this capability. So let us have a look at that. So let us talk about the nitrogen fixing microbes or the microorganisms. Now, there can be free living nitrogen fixing microbes, free living. When I say free living, that means they do not organisms which do not depend on others for their survival so they prepare their own food they are self-dependent for their survival rather so organisms which live independently of other organisms example would be azotobacter which is an aerobic bacteria aerobic means bacteria which needs oxygen for their survival so ox aerobic word is with oxygen and anaerobic means without oxygen Rhodospirillum is another example of a free living by nitrogen fixing bacteria but this is anaerobic. So this is the difference between the two. Azotobacter is aerobic and Rhodospirillum is anaerobic. Anabina, Nostoc, they are examples of aerobic cyanobacteria. Now what is cyanobacteria? They are nothing but the blue-green algae. So we have spoken about all these terms when we uh, learned the lesson on diversity in living organisms, right? The so cyanobacteria is the blue-green algae. The next category of nitrogen-fixing microbes are the symbiotic nitrogen-fixing microbes. The first category was free-living, so they do not depend on others. Next is symbiotic. When I say symbiotic, we have spoken, we have discussed about a process called symbiosis. Do you remember? 
Yes, it is a mutual association between two organisms. That is, two organisms live with each other because both of them get some or the other benefit from each other. So they are dependent on each other for their survival. So that kind of association is known as symbiosis. So there are certain nitrogen fixing microbes which are symbiotic in nature. That is they are dependent on some other organism for their survival. And that is how they act as nitrogen fixing bacteria. So they are dependent on another organism for mutual benefit as I said. So example is rhizobium and frankium. So rhizobium is basically a rod shaped bacteria. It is normally it is a free living bacteria in soil. When this rhizobium is present under the soil it is free living. So it is not dependent on anybody else. But this rhizobium bacteria can enter into a symbiotic relationship with the roots of leguminous plants. So leguminous plants are uh, the plants like peas, beans, lentils. They are all legumes. So this rhizobium bacteria and the roots of the leguminous plants both share a symbiotic relationship. So as such the rhizobium bacteria in soil under the soil they are free living but when they come in contact with the roots of leguminous plants they are symbiotic that is they stay inside the uh, roots of the leguminous plants and then they help each other mutually. The bacteria gets all its nutrients from the roots and the benefit of the root is that the bacteria helps to fix the nitrogen that is it converts the atmospheric nitrogen which was unusable into a usable form into the soil and with that usable form of nitrogen the plant can utilize that nitrogen for its own purpose because plant needs nitrogen to make proteins, DNA and other biomolecules. So that means both the plant as well as the rhizobium bacteria, both of them get benefited from each other. So that is a symbiotic relationship. So these are the two categories of nitrogen fixing microbes. One is free living and the other is symbiotic. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, Find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.